For 54 years, the American-based Boeing company enjoyed a monopoly of the skies. That all ended in 1970, though, when several European manufacturers came together to form a corporation that would not only rival Boeing's jet production, but as of 2019, would establish itself as the number one supplier of large commercial aircraft worldwide. We've already explored Boeing's history, so it's only fair we pay the same respects to its closest competitor. This is the evolution of Airbus. The foundation of Airbus can be traced back to a meeting between ministers of France, Britain, and Germany in July 1967, at a time when Boeing was planning its new long-range 747 jumbo aircraft there were fears that European manufacturers would become too dependent on the United States, putting hundreds of thousands of European aviation jobs at risk. Britain had already built aircraft such as the Comet, the BAC-111, and the Trident, while France had produced the Caravelle. Both countries had collaborated on the Concorde, the world's first supersonic airliner. However, none of those aircraft were viewed as viable long-term options to deal with a growing demand for public air travel, let alone to compete with Boeing's far more popular jets. Throughout the 1960s, the British and French began developing newer aircraft to cater to frequent travelers. The problem was they were still largely competing against each other, and the Americans held more than 80% of the world market. Europe needed to work together to stay in the game. Hence the meeting in 1967. Within days of that meeting, a French engineer by the name of Roger Batille was appointed technical director of the A300 program, a project aimed at developing and manufacturing a 300-seat Airbus. Henry Ziegler, then president of France's Sud Aviation, was later brought on as general manager, and a German politician named Franz Joseph Strauss was named chairman of the supervisory board along with a young German engineer named Felix Kratt. These men would come to be known as the fathers of Airbus. In May 1969, the A300 launch agreement was officially signed between France and West Germany. Britain was initially going to provide engines for the A300 aircraft via Rolls-Royce. However, due to concerns over mounting costs and still hurting from the failure of Concorde, the British withdrew from the project. Seeing the opportunity to rebuild its civil aviation industry, which had been devastated by World War II, Germany stepped up to provide 50% of the overall costs, with France committed to doing the same. British aviation company Hawker Sidley did remain to develop and produce the wings for the A300 aircraft thanks in part to a 35 million pound loan from the West German government. Meanwhile, it was proposed by technical director Roger Batille that the French would make the cockpit, control systems, and the lower center section of the A300's fuselage, while the Germans would make the forward and rear fuselage sections, plus the upper part of the center section. The Dutch would be called upon to make the moving parts of the wing, such as flaps and spoilers. And in later years, the Spanish would be responsible for the horizontal tailplane. Batille would later recall that he wanted to use all the available talents and capacities to their utmost without worrying about the color of the flag or what language was spoken. The technical director also realized partway through development that a 300-seat aircraft may be too big for the projected market. He therefore began working in secret on a scaled-down version of the aircraft one that would seat 250 passengers and have a range of 1,380 miles. This smaller aircraft, once revealed, would become known as the A300B, and it had a major benefit in that it could be flown with less powerful engines that were already available at the time. Seeing as how the A300 was without an engine after the withdrawal of Rolls-Royce, this was a very welcome result. The twin-engine A300B would also be smaller, lighter and more economical than its three-engined American counterparts, namely the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar. The A300B's fuselage was reduced from 6.4 meters 
to 5.6 meters in diameter, and its length was shortened from 53.9 meters to 48.3 meters. Consequently, it was 25 tons lighter than the original A300. Raising the cabin floor allowed for enough space in the hold to accommodate standard LD3 freight containers side by side, meaning airlines could carry more cargo, and specifically designed wings provided greater lift and improved the aircraft's overall performance. The A300B was touted as being able to climb faster and attain a level cruise altitude sooner than any other passenger aircraft, giving the cabin crew more time for the in-flight service. The engines selected for the A300 were the American-made GE CF650As, but a deal was struck for the engines to be made with the assistance of a French firm called Snecma. The engines could produce up to 49,000 pounds of thrust, as powerful as anything else on the market, yet they were more economical. On 3rd September 1970, Air France signed a letter of intent to buy six A300s, the first ever order won by Airbus. The A300 was a new type of aircraft, and Air France was the first airline to believe in its potential. Fun fact, Airbus uses a unique numbering system for its aircraft, which makes it much easier for both organizations and individuals to identify its planes. Each aircraft is given an alphanumeric string for its model number. For example, A310. This is followed by a dash and then a three-number code representing the aircraft series, engine manufacturer, and engine number, respectively. So let's use an A310-300 with Pratt & Whitney engines as an example. The code is 3 for Series 300. Then for the engine codes, there is a list for the different manufacturing companies. Here we can see that Pratt & Whitney engines would be code 2. The engine version is 1, thus the aircraft number is A310-321. While work on the A300 had already been underway for years, the founding of Airbus as a partnership didn't actually take place until December 1970, when it was officially established as an economic interest group. France's Aerospital and Germany's Dutch Airbus each took a 50% stake, and the headquarters were established in Paris before moving to Toulouse four years later. The first official test flight occurred on 28 October 1972, one month ahead of schedule, despite many delays due to bad weather. It lasted one hour and 23 minutes. Having already reduced the size of the original A300, Airbus realized that 250 seats weren't enough for Air France, so the fuselage was stretched to accommodate 270 passengers, and the A300B1 became the A300B2, which entered service on the 23rd of May, 1974. While testing out the A300B2, Airbus began talking to Korean Airlines about producing a longer-range version, the B-4. It would have a larger central fuel tank and a maximum takeoff weight, or MTO, of 157.5 tons compared to the 137 tons of the B-2. In September 1974, Korean Airlines signed a deal for four A300 B-4s, becoming Airbus's first non-European customer. The A300B4 would soon be known as the B4100 and a B4200 model, with an additional optional fuel tank in the rear cargo hold, plus a raised MTO of 165 tons, would be certified in April 1979. In total, 561 Airbus A300s were produced between 1971 and 2007, with airlines such as South African Airways. Scandinavian Airlines and German Air among the first customers for different variants. Fun fact, to test its planes, Airbus set up an international team of test pilots, with the German Airbus team given lead responsibility for conducting the actual flight test. Bernard Ziegler, the son of Airbus's co-founder, Henry Ziegler, was a test pilot tasked with organizing the A300 flight on the basis that it was a European organization, and he set about recruiting top veterans from France, Britain, and Spain. Catering to the demand of aircraft smaller than the A300, Airbus launched the A310 on the 7th of July, 1978. Both Swiss Air and Lufthansa placed initial orders for the smaller plane, which performed its maiden flight on the 3rd of April, 1982. 
The A310 was 7 meters shorter than the original A300 variants and featured a smaller 219 meter squared wing. Notably, it was during the production of the A310 that Britain recommitted itself to Airbus. There were talks of the smaller wing being produced elsewhere. So Britain put up a 50 million pound loan towards development costs. And from January 1979, British Aerospace took up a 20% stake in Airbus Industries. France and Germany's shares were reduced to 37.9% each, with the rest owned by Spain. The A310 could seat 218 passengers in a two-class configuration and could travel a longer distance of up to 5,000 miles. This was very impressive compared to the Boeing 737, its closest competitor. Even the Boeing 737 MAX didn't come close, with a range of 3,300 miles, meaning the A310 could go 1,700 miles further. The A310 made use of a lighter weight carbon fiber reinforced plastic on secondary structures such as spoilers, air brakes, and the rudder with the A310-300 later using composites on primary structures too. It also employed drag-reducing wing-tip devices to improve fuel efficiency. The cockpit of the A310 introduced a two-crew glass design, using six computer-driven cathode ray tube displays to provide the captain and co-pilot with centralized flight and navigation information as well as monitoring and warning data. Electronic flight instrument displays replaced many of the traditional analog dials on the main instrument panel. These changes were later adopted and developed in the A300 models, as well as all subsequent Airbus planes, to provide commonality and improved safety for pilots who were able to familiarize themselves easily with all Airbus aircraft. There have also been several accidents with the A310, including Thai Airways International Flight 311 in July 1992. It became the first whole loss and the first fatal accident involving the Airbus A310. Sadly, all 99 passengers and 14 crew did not survive the crash. In June 2009, Yamenia Flight 626 crashed into the Indian Ocean after the crew's inappropriate flight control inputs which led to a stall of the aircraft. Out of the 153 people on board, just one survived, a 12-year-old girl. The sole survivor had been floating in the ocean for 13 hours before being rescued. It was her loving mother who had helped her to hold on to plane debris, but sadly, she could not survive the crash herself. Fun fact, an Airbus A310 appeared in the 2013 movie World War Z. After the plane is infested with zombies, Jerry Lane, who is played by Brad Pitt, throws a hand grenade, leading to the crash of the airplane. Funnily enough, some airlines removed the plane crash scene for people watching World War Z on board their aircraft. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Bravo the A310 paved the way for the A300-600, officially designated as the A300-B4-600, which was slightly longer than the earlier B2 and B4 variants, with an increased interior space that allowed for two extra rows of seats. The A300-600 was improved in many ways, including an improved wing design, simpler single-slotted flowler flaps, and several other improvements, resulting in 8% lower operating costs per seat than its nearest competitor. The A300-600 made its first flight on the 8th of July, 1983, and entered service in June 1984. The 177 foot or 57 meter aircraft had seats for up to 345 passengers and a range of up to 4,660 miles. Several freighter versions and a long range version of the A300-600 were made. In total, 313 of these airplanes were built. Even though it is almost 50 years since the first A300 entered service, the aircraft is still used today. In fact, as of June 2022, 229 A300 family aircraft are in commercial service, of which the largest operator is FedEx Express, with 70 A300 airplanes. Sadly, as of June 2021, the A300 has been involved in 77 accidents and incidents, resulting in over 1,133 fatalities. On April 26, 1994, China Airlines Flight 140 was attempting to land at an airport in Japan. However, the takeoff setting was accidentally triggered. While the pilots attempted to pitch the aircraft down while in autopilot, the aircraft kept pitching up, 
Ultimately, the A300 stalled and crashed into the ground, resulting in 264 fatalities, with just seven people able to survive. It became the deadliest accident in the history of China Airlines. Another terrible accident happened with American Airlines Flight 587 on November 12, 2001, just two months after the September 11th attacks in the World Trade Center. Shortly after takeoff, the airplane crashed in the neighborhood of Bell Harbor in New York. Sadly, all 260 people aboard the plane lost their lives, as well as five people on the ground. It became the second deadliest aviation accident in U.S. history. The fact that the crash happened in New York and so shortly after the September 11th attacks spawned fears of another terrorist attack. However, the National Transportation Safety Board attributed the disaster to the first officer's overuse of rudder controllers during turbulence. Besides these terrible accidents, the A300 has also been involved in 36 criminal occurrences and hijackings, resulting in over 300 fatalities. On October 26, 1986, Thai Airways Flight 602 was flying from Bangkok to Osaka when there was an explosion while in mid-flight. The cause was a hand grenade brought onto the plane by a gangster from a Yakuza organization. The plane descended rapidly and was able to land safely. 62 people were injured, but luckily, all 239 people on board survived. A far more tragic story was with Iran Air Flight 655 on July 3rd, 1988. The airplane was mistaken for an Iranian F-14 Tomcat by the United States Navy and was shot down. Sadly, all 290 people aboard the plane were killed. President Ronald Reagan issued a note to the Iranian government expressing deep regret. However, the U.S. continued to insist that the Navy ship was acting in self-defense. On December 24, 1994, Air France Flight 8969 was hijacked by four terrorists of the armed Islamic group. The terrorists intended to crash the plane over the Eiffel Tower. Luckily, before the terrorists managed to get the aircraft on the ground, they were shot down during intense gunfire by the French Special Forces. In 2010, a French movie named The Assault was made about the SWAT team tasked to save the passengers from the hijacked Air France plane. Fun fact, before Airbus developed the A300, wide-body airplanes had three or four engines, such as the enormous Boeing 747, which has four engines. Airbus took a risk to develop the A300, the world's first two-engine wide-body aircraft. After Airbus improved the A300 further to fly long-distance routes to increase sales, Boeing also decided to develop a wide-body twin jet, the Boeing 767. This was just the start of the intense competition between two massive airplane manufacturers. Despite calls to focus on the longer range A330 or A340 models, Airbus stuck with the A320 for their next project. The series of narrow body airliners first took flight in February 1987 and was introduced among Air France's fleet in April 1988 with multiple variants offering a maximum takeoff weight between 68 and 93.5 tons, plus a capable range of 3,760 to 4,315 miles, the A320 measures 37.6 meters long and can accommodate 150 to 186 passengers. It was the first commercial airplane to feature a fly-by-wire control system meaning that the cockpit has an electronic control system rather than a manual or mechanical one. Airbus was the first manufacturer to introduce this and has since used the technology on all its aircraft, with Boeing slowly following suit but preferring to maintain more manual overrides as opposed to electronic ones. Fun fact, in October 2019, the A320 family surpassed the Boeing 737 to become the highest selling airliner. As of August 2022, a total of 16,622 A320s had been ordered and were in service with more than 340 operators. More than 157 million flights had been completed around the globe using the A320. We've barely scratched the surface when it comes to Airbus. So, click the video on screen to watch part two. Thanks for watching.